afternoon and welcome to Bordentown, New Jersey. It is November 12th, 2020, and we are here to honor and to remember Joseph Hopkinson, standing in front of the Hopkinson House. It is a National Historic Landmark. So Joseph Hopkinson was a 19th century lawyer. He was a judge, a musician, a writer, a poet, and a politician. And he was the son of Francis Hopkinson, who was also a lawyer, a federal judge, a writer, a satirist, a poet, a musician, and signer of the Declaration of Independence and designer of America's first flag with the 13 stars and stripes. He may have also designed some coinage. So as the adage goes, sometimes the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and I think that's what happened here with these Hopkinsons. So although born in Philadelphia, uh, Francis Hopkinson and Joseph's mother, Anne Borden, moved to Bordentown in 1774. So Joseph spent a lot of time in Bordentown and ultimately this became his family home. He attended his father, Francis's alma mater, the University of Pennsylvania Law School. And he entered there when he was 13 years old, graduating at 15 and a half, and then reading the law until at the age of 21, he was admitted to the bar. He practiced initially in Pennsylvania, in Easton, and then ultimately in Philadelphia, and at some points in time in Bordentown, New Jersey. In 1794, he married Emily Mifflin, the daughter of the governor of Pennsylvania. This marriage, together with his considerable intellectual talents, placed him in the most active political and social circles. He had many influential and famous friends. Emily and Fran and Joseph Hopkinson had, are you ready for this, 14 children, nine of whom lived to adulthood. Joseph Hopkinson earned a sterling reputation being involved in some of the most famous and historic trials of the day, three of which were landmark constitutional cases that were before the Supreme Court of the, of the United States. He was also a member of the House of Representatives in 1814, where he served for two terms. He was a colleague of Daniel Webster, who was a New Hampshire House of Representatives uh, representative, and they joined forces after Hopkinson um, delivered a closing argument in a very famous case. There was an observer who detailed Hopkinson's eloquence, and it goes like this. He was as handsome and impressive as a man as Webster, though not exactly the same type. His face was that of a lifelong student, thoughtful and refined. His voice, though light, had a golden tone. His manner was quiet, yet distinguished. Joseph Hopkinson showed breeding in every look, movement, word, and intonation. He had a beautiful and highly trained mind, equipped with immense and accurate knowledge, systematically arranged. In another United States Supreme Court case where he and Daniel Webster were actually adversaries, Chief Justice John Marshall described the incredible professionalism that he had witnessed with this comment. Both in man maintaining the affirmative and the negative, a splendor of eloquence and strength of argument seldom, if ever, surpassed have been displayed. In 1828, Hopkinson became a federal district judge. He never became a Supreme Court judge, although his name was often mentioned in connection with open seats. He was an avid supporter of the arts. Big truck just went by. <laughs> and he served for many years as president of the Pennsylvania Academy of Arts, the vice president of the American Philosophical Society, and he was a trustee for the University of Pennsylvania. But one of the things for which he was renowned in his lifetime was writing Hail Columbia. It was the de facto national anthem of the United States for most of the 19th century, and it remained so until 1931 when the Star Spangled Banner officially became our national anthem. Hail Columbia is now the official vice presidential anthem, and it was set to the extant music of the president's march which was written for George Washington's first inauguration, inauguration in 1789. So in addition to having a home in Philadelphia, Joseph Hopkinson had a farm, a small farm in Bordentown, New Jersey. And that's 
why he was able to befriend a very famous person, Joseph Bonaparte, the brother of Napoleon. Joseph Bonaparte having been exiled from Spain and Naples. They became very close friends. They shared a love of art, literature, and politics. And when Bonaparte returned to Europe in the, in the 1830s, he left Hopkinson in charge of his affairs in the United States. This is a picture of Joseph Hopkinson, the man of the day. He died in 1842 and he is buried at the Christ Episcopal Church Cemetery right here in Bordentown, New Jersey. So we're so happy that you joined us to learn about Joseph Hopkinson. He's revered by residents of the city of Bordentown. We honor him as the Bordentown Historical Society and we hope that you tune in again soon. Thank you so much for, for joining us.